Once we started ripping everything out of the boat to get rid of the mold and mildew smell, we started finding wires that went different places and some of them could be identified and some of them we had no idea what they were. For instance, these are the 12 volt lines that go to the refrigerator and then obviously this is the hot and cold water line to the sink. As we started going through everything and wiping it down, we found more and more wires and I took that opportunity to identify what every wire was and label them so that way it would be that much easier in the future if we we're going to do any work on anything. I also removed the existing faucets in the galley area and also the head and uh, replaced them with some nice kitchen quality faucets. I also took this time to identify the hot and cold water lines and mark them accordingly. We also pulled out all of the old carpeting and some of the pieces of wood, like in this case the toe kick, had carpet on it and then it was held in place with about a million staples. We pulled everything apart and that was very tedious and time consuming and labeled what everything was and in cases where the wood was compromised we just made new pieces of wood and then covered everything in spar varnish. All of this took a lot of time and a lot of effort, and we had a lot of help. My daughter came to help, and my wife, and occasionally the dog was always in the way helping. But all of the pieces of wood had to be taken apart, and then we labeled everything, because especially this step area was very confusing how it was built. And as you can see, the carpet's all worn out, and what you can't really see in the video is the smell. The uh, mildew smell was very strong. You can see the stains in the carpet. Um, the, and this is actually a sleeping area. That's the air conditioner and the ceiling above where we would be sleeping or a guest would be sleeping. Uh, the wood is just all delaminated and it has mildew and mold and nastiness on it. So we used that piece as a template and uh, just redid the whole thing. Plus it's about 100 degrees out. I don't know if I mentioned that. This is actually the step that goes downstairs when you go into the companion way. The large hole is a air conditioning duct and then the smaller hole is for a courtesy light. Then we recovered it with carpeting and we chose the most difficult carpeting we could find to work with which would be Berber. It came out really nice but it's quite a bit of effort. <coughs> Here's the finished product, and I think my wife did a great job on it. It was a lot of work, actually. Here's an exterior shot of the boat, or the SS Mildew, as it's affectionately known. Everywhere you look is another video and another project. For instance, all the canvas, that's going to be redone. We're going to contract that out, because all the zip ties together really wasn't cutting it. It does have a sunroof, although I don't think it's supposed to, and it doesn't really keep the rain and the sun out too well. And the zippers leave something to be desired. I mean, they kind of work, but as long as you don't need the teeth or anything like that, it's just seen better days. The mold and mildew seem to have gotten everywhere, even back behind the breaker panel, so I took everything apart and also took that opportunity to identify what all the lines were and mark them and identify them and kind of have a clue as to what I was going to be doing in the future. And I used a lot of bleach and water in that sprayer. I put on new lines for the kitchen sink just in case. The, the other ones seemed to be working, but I figured since I had it all apart, I might as well. And then I also labeled the hot and cold lines. This is the old roof panel or ceiling panel, I should say, that uh, had all the 
mold and mildew in it. And when you turn it over, you can see how bad it was. That's a piece of Luon underneath that we ended up tracing and cutting a new piece and then covering it in spar varnish. So even if it were to get wet in the future, at least it's still waterproof. And you can see this was pretty shot. I'm surprised it was still clinging to the ceiling, but I guess that's why they had put Velcro there to begin with. As I said before, I used the original piece as a template and then used a Sharpie and marked it. And then I ended up cutting it with a vibratory or oscillating multi-tool. It seemed to work better than a jigsaw. I was afraid a jigsaw was just going to rip the on. I know that there's ways to do it and using masking tape and turning it upside down and all that stuff, but I just used the vibrating tool and it did a great job. Plus it's very convenient and it was cordless and it was right at hand. So My original thought was to make it simple and just use some spray urethane that I had and it just made a tremendous mess everywhere so I ended up using a brush and it made it much much easier. Here my wife's measuring out some of the flooring that's going to go inside the shower area because the old one was pretty nasty and it has to meet the approval of the supervisor here who seems to be in the midst of everything. She's using her special scissors that no one else is allowed to use to cut the flooring and uh, actually you can see when we pulled up the old flooring it was pretty nasty. That's just the old mastic that's underneath of it. It's pretty gross looking but it's just the glue. Once we got it all cleaned up, we found a couple of cracks in the floor and we actually ended up using epoxy over it, so we ended up not using the flooring. Here you can see I've got the lines all identified, all the different uh, high voltage, uh, 120 volt, and then the smaller ones are the 12 volt, and then the hot and cold water lines. They're all going to be in a carpeted chase that's uh, in that, against that wall there, which hides them out of the way. Here you can see where the water dripped down and then found its own level and ran across the top of that piece of wood and just caused all the mold and mildew. Uh, the hole was actually very small where it was leaking. It was up near a trash can up on the top deck, but we got that fixed. As we were pulling up the carpeting, here's also an access portal um, that gives you access into where the... Um, sea strainer is and also the orange thing is the pump for the air conditioner as well as the bilge pump and the sump for the shower. This is underneath the sink in the main galley where you can see I run new 12 volt lines as well as plumbing lines. This is the new piece of wood that we cut for the ceiling and my wife is stapling the material onto it with stainless steel staples although the stapler was not always cooperative we had to get a new one. The new piece looks nice, and it fit right into place. Now it's time to start putting in some of the carpeting. The Berber looks really nice, but it's very difficult to work with, difficult to cut, and once it's down, it's hard to move. It was also about 100 degrees out, so we were drinking iced tea, but we probably wished we had something else. This is where she said everything needs to go that way. So we had to get off the carpet and move it over and get it in place. I think it turned out really nice though. We're taking our time and going bit by bit and that's the new lighting, the new air conditioning, and the new carpeting in place along with the new ceiling. The lighting that was installed on either side of the sleeping berth is adjustable so it can be dimmed to be brighter or less bright which I thought was a nice feature in case you want to read or something like that in the evening. There's a piece of trim that goes across the ceiling here to cover up that crack. It just hasn't been installed yet. And this is a shot of that carpeted chase or cover that I made that covers the wires and the hot and cold water lines. You can see everything is a lot more organized now and 
the 120 volt lines are all together and labeled along with the 12 volt lines and then the water lines. All in all, I think it's coming along nicely on the interior. We've got a lot of the carpeting and wall covering in, and we're putting in the lighting, and it's making progress. There's still lots more to do, but at least we're making some progress somewhere. All of the forward berth compartments uh, were cleaned out and painted on the inside with a white marine paint, and then I put lights on the inside of each one of them that are switched on and off. Every compartment has a light now, and there's a lot more ambient light inside the cabin. We also added a flat screen TV and an additional air conditioning duct to make the front of the boat a lot more comfortable. You'll recognize that table from another video. It's a smart TV and it's on an articulating arm so it can be seen anywhere and there's a marine antenna on the radar arch. The touch screen thermostat is a nice feature and it has a lot of different functions on the menu so I can monitor different things. I couldn't find the trim that I needed so I ended up making my own. I bought some oak and then cut it with a table saw and planed it down and routed an edge on it to put it around the different appliances. This is a storage locker or closet and we ended up putting a light in here as well as running the air conditioning duct for the restroom through the wall. I made a door to go over top of a triangular cabinet that's in the galley and made it a little bit larger so it could hold pots and pans and my wife found some nice stainless steel hardware on Amazon that I put on. Since I had the galley torn apart I took out the breaker box and identified and labeled everything on the back to make it a little bit easier and then I had to cut a hole for the microwave and air fryer. Once I had all the trim fitted up I'm going to take it down and varnish it and then reinstall it with latches on the cabinet door. This is the SMOD, a refrigerator I've never heard of. And then this is where the new microwave is going to go. The shower in the head was replaced with an Oxygenix shower head and then it also has a six foot hose on it. And then we also replaced the fixture in the galley with a nice Price Fister one from Lowe's. Once I wipe all this down back here with bleach and water and get rid of the last bit of mildew, I'm going to reinstall the microwave. And this is kind of what it looks like. Anyway, this is just a quick update on the progress of the interior. There's lots more to come and lots more to do, and I'll be sure to keep the videos coming. Thanks for watching.